Welcome back everyone to our YouTube channel, spe especially in our subject, Earth and Life Science. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, I am Educado. Here's the link below. Welcome learners to our educational videos in Earth and Life Science. Hopefully you will learn a lot, think a lot, and explore a lot. Let's proceed. Let's start. Lesson 2 in Earth and Life Science, Origin and Structure of the Earth, the Subsystem. And I'm your teacher, Sir Arnold from SDO Antipolo City. Now, here's a simple question. Why do we need to know about Earth spheres? Para saan nga ba ito? Bakit kailangan natin itong pag-aralan? Earth Systems Overview The Earth is a system consisting of four major interacting components. The atmosphere, the biosphere, the hydrosphere, and the geosphere. We will all examine this, these four spheres in details. So what we are waiting for? Let's start, mga ka-learners. Let's start with the atmosphere. The Earth is surrounded by a blanket of air, which we call the atmosphere. That's the highlighted part, oh, blanket of air. Meaning to say, binabalutan niya ang Earth ng hangin bilang barrier, shield, against different kind of debris. The atmosphere consists of four unique layers. We have the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. The atmosphere reaches over 350 miles up from the surface of the Earth. So yung po yung distance niya mula sa lupa pataas. The atmosphere is primarily composed of nitrogen, which is about 78%, and oxygen po na 21%. Other components exist in small quantities. Next, we have the biosphere. The biosphere is the life zone, or ito yung zone na kung saan puros biotic factors. So, when we say biotic, ito yung mga, mga bu mayroong buhay. And includes all living organisms, including humans and all organic matters that has not yet decomposed. Meaning to say, dapat buhay. The biosphere is structured into a hierarchy known as food chain. So yung food chain, uh, ito yung series ng eat and eating relationship from a autotrophs or producer up to consumers and decomposers. Energy and nutrients like carbon are transferred from one level of the food chain to the next, and so on and so on. Now let's have the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere contains all the water found on our planet. Meaning to say po, ito po yung region na kung saan puro tubig ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. We have the surface water which includes the ocean as well as the water from lakes, rivers, and creeks. Groundwater naman po includes water trapped in the soil and groundwater. And atmosphere, meron din tayo dyan water vapor. O ito yung hamog, yung sinasabi natin. Frozen water naman includes ice caps and glaciers, also called as the cryosphere. Then it's only about 3% of the water on earth is fresh water. Then the 70% of the fresh water is frozen pa in the form of glacial or glacial ice. 0.9% in liquid form. So, yung sinasabi natin, 97% is almost salt water po. Ayan. Okay? Now, we have the geosphere. The geosphere is the solid part of the earth. From the core, from the inner core, outer core, mantle, crust to the surface. Includes volcanoes, rocks, minerals, coal, and oil, and many more. Minerals resources are mined from the geosphere. That's the only way para makakuha tayo ng mineral resources. The Earth System Science. Take a look at here. The 
to the picture. We have the connection of the four spheres, no? Yung geosphere connected siya sa atmosphere, yung atmosphere connected siya sa hydrosphere, at yung hydrosphere connected sa geosphere, and every one of the spheres are connected to biosphere. The Earth System Science is a study of how the four spheres of the Earth systems interact continually, each affecting the others. Example, a scientist that studies global warming is an Earth System Scientist. Kasi kapag isa kang scientist and you're studying about global warming, you are analyzing and studying about the condition of the atmosphere, Pano market on water vapor, so it's connected with hydrosphere. Then, um, pano nagkakaro ng stock of water sa sa lupa, so geosphere. And then, how does it affect the form of life on Earth, which is biosphere? So, lahat ng spheres natin, especially the four, are interconnected to each other. And on this picture, we have the volcano's eruption. It sends ash and gases into the air and sending lava and ash down onto surrounding forests and human habitations. So, yan ay bahagi ng ating geosphere. Siyempre, kapag yung, yung ash umakyat, it gives particles or debris on our atmosphere. Then, siyempre, it can affect the four of lives nearing or living near the volcano which affects the biosphere. So dito naman, sa hurricanes naman, this hurricane sweep across the ocean and into the land, damaging the dwelling of people who live along the coast. So ito ay bahagi ng ating atmosphere. Syempre, it affects the hydrosphere kasi kapag nagkaroon ng hurricane, there's a great chance that the water level will increase. Then another Yung geosphere natin, syempre yung ating kalupaan, it can make the soil na mas malambot, then it can cause different kind of disasters like landslide and many more. And of course, it will affect the lives of the people or different organisms living on that area. And that talks about the biosphere. So see, lahat ng spheres are connected to each other. Another, the earthquakes. So the earthquakes can damage buildings which may kill people as well as cause fires which release gases into the air. Earthquakes in the oceans may cause a tsunami which can eventually hit the land and kill both animals and people. So itong earthquake na to ay usually nangyayari sa ating geosphere. Siyempre, pag nagkaroon ng earthquake, may mga maapekto ang buhay ng living organisms. So, the biosphere ay affected dito. And of course, it can bring different kind of debris sa ating atmosphere. And of course, yung tsunami, yung kanyang after effect, which affects our hydrosphere. Again, Earth is a complex made up of many smaller systems through which matter and energy are continuously cycled. So, paikot-ikot lang naman yan yung energy na yan mula sa isang sphere papunta sa isang sphere and so on. Energy and matter flow through earth spheres like geosphere nga, hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. Ang paraan ng flowing ng energy sa atmosphere is mostly by convection. So yung, yung earth kasi consists nga siya ng apat na subsystems which are mentioned earlier. Across whose boundaries matter and energy flows. Yung atmosphere, yung air, yung biosphere, living things, at yung hydrosphere naman ay yung water, at yung geosphere naman natin ay yung land. The atmosphere provides a geosphere with heat and energy needed for rock breakdown and erosion. So, yung hangin, it can help in weathering no? ng mga ng abiotic matters natin sa paligid. The biosphere naman receives gases, heats, and sunlight or the form of energy from the atmosphere. Then, it receives water from the hydrosphere and lahat ng living mediums or organisms from the geosphere. So again, 
Uulitin ko lang po mga ka-learners na ang Earth ay may mga subsystem pero lahat ng yon ay connected to each other. That's it mga ka-learners. Hopefully you've learned a lot from these educational videos that we have presented. Always remember, share your knowledge and apply your knowledge. You click the link below for the simple assessment that we have. Again, thank you so much mga ka-learners. So, mga ka-learners, before we end our educational video for today, don't forget to like, make a comment, then share. Then, subscribe tayo sa ating channel, I Am Educado. Don't forget to take the exams na meron tayo dito sa ating link section. Thank you so much.